Testament prophets, if it gets bit it to sung to Yemen. Before we talk about the end of the year, uh, the saints for today, uh, one of them, uh, Blessed Alan de Salminiac, Bishop uh, in France from in the 1600s. Um, is noteworthy because uh, he was he was bishop for 23 years, and he first attended the Council of Trent as a priest, uh, and later when he became a bishop, was very um, uh, determined to follow the, the lead of St. Charles Borromeo in forming his diocese. Uh, and so he did that very well, uh, took great care in, in uh, um, caring for his flock, and he had 800 parishes uh, in his diocese, and he visited each one personally. Uh, every single parish, 800 of them, he visited personally nine times as bishop. So it was in incredible, incredible efforts uh, from him. And he was noted for his face-to-face -face meetings with parishioners. Uh, he would just sit down individually with, with anybody who, who would like. Uh, so a great example there from Blessed Alan um, uh, from France. Um, another uh, a woman, a nun, Blessed uh, Giuseppina Nicoli, she was in the 18, 1800s. Uh, she was a nurse, a Daughters of Charity of St. Vincent de Paul. And she spent a great deal of time teaching the poor. And very interesting, it says she, she taught those, um, she taught the poor, the orphans, the illiterate, and the daughters of rich families whose children went to fine schools, but who had no religious education. So all of those were included in the poor whom she taught, because she taught them catechism, she taught them the faith. And it doesn't matter how much you have materially, if you don't have the faith, you don't have anything. And uh, very sad, you know, we, we have this, this culture today where, where abortion is legal, but even before abortion was possible, children were still getting aborted, we could say, um, in that she cared for um, was it children who were, uh, who were orphaned, who were homeless, abandoned, or thrown out of the house by their families. Right, so so this, this happens. It's, it's horrible uh, that, that people would treat their children so poorly. And it happens still in many countries. In, in Africa, they have a great uh, uh, orphanages are by children whose parents are still living, but they've been abandoned or turned out of their families. They just don't want to care for them anymore. And that would be one of the reasons why uh, Christ our Lord came as a child. He came as a, a little baby. Uh, that's precious, right? That is valuable. And that's a gift to humanity, our, our children themselves. So, so when Christ came clothed in the flesh, clothed as a little infant, uh, he really came very richly adorned, we could say, uh, with, with the gift of, of, of that, that, that childhood, the gift of life. <clears throat> but our, um, our commemorated saint for today is St. Sylvester. Uh, and he was the pope who saw the church. He was a transition piece from persecution to uh, uh, the um, establishment of, of Catholicism as not the official religion, but uh, uh, the, the Constantine the Great, who, who, who began to build churches openly. It was like the church went from, uh, from persecution to uh, it's just, it's, it has official status in the empire and it is um, esteemed. Uh, so he was pope from 314 to 335, and he would be the first one to engage in e official church and state relations uh, with Constantine. In fact, he instructed Constantine in the faith, um, even though he didn't, he wouldn't, Constantine wouldn't be baptized until, until much, much later, but he gave him his first instruction in the faith. He advised him in the construction of churches, of which there were many. Um, so under the patronage of the emperor, uh, the, the, the church built the most important basilicas that we still have today. The original St. Peter's Basilica on Vatican Hill, that was built under uh, Pope Sylvester. Um, it's completely different now. It was, it was burned and destroyed. The current one was built by um, in, in, like the Renaissance times. But originally the church on Vatican Hill built under Pope uh, uh, Sylvester uh, with Constantine's assistance. Same thing with um, the uh, Basilica of St. John Lateran. That was gifted by the emperor, uh, turned into a church. Uh, St. Paul's outside the wall, the Basilica of St. Lawrence, right? All these are the ancient, ancient churches. This is when they were uh, uh, constructed. Um, and in fact, in, along those lines, uh, Pope Sylvester had decreed that altars no longer should be made of wood, but should be made of stone, signifying the permanence of the church, right? Before they were uh, Christians, Catholics were harassed. They would, they would say mass here and there in the catacombs and houses, uh, but now uh, that was no longer necessary. Churches could be out in the open. They, they, they could be magnificent, they should be. And so the altar, uh, altars should be stone. And over time, just due to um, availability of materials, it was decreed, okay, only the tabletop has to be, uh, the mensa has to be stone. And eventually that became 
uh, the altar stone. Just a po a, that portion, that center part of the altar is a stone in which is included a relic of a saint. And so you, you may see wooden altars. Uh, underneath the linens, there's a little square of stone, and that's from Pope uh, St. Sylvester. Uh, he also actually did quite a bit of, of uh, we would say, things that, I mean, the world's not going to find very interesting. I mean, maybe, maybe the average Catholic won't find it interesting, but I mean, as a priest, it's sure interesting to me, so I'll, I'll tell you some of them. Uh, so if, if anybody recites the divine office, uh, you know, there's, there's uh, Sunday, there's uh, Dominica, Saturday is Sabato, and the other days of the week are ferias, feria one, two, three. Uh, Pope St. Sylvester said, this is what we're going to call them, the Lord's Day, the Sabbath, and feria. So that's, that's why they're named what they are, Pope St. Sylvester. He also said deacons. Deacons should wear a dalmatic, a stole, and a maniple. Right? You look at the, the, the vestments of the sacred ministers, why are they wearing what they are? Somebody had to make the decision. Pope Sylvester was one of them. Um, this is like, to me, this is like, um, I don't know if I could use an, an analogy. Maybe it's like, like a computer code, right? Like you see what's on the screen, but what's underneath? Who wrote the code? Why do we see what we see? That's kind of, when knowing this stuff, that's how it is. Why does the church do this? Why does the church do that? You go back and you find the men who made those decisions. It's not just some arcane bunch of arbitrary rules that we do here and there. Somebody made the decision. They had a reason and a purpose for doing so. And, and, and knowing uh, a little bit about that is good. It gives, it, it, it gives um, depth and substance to, to our, our, our solemnities. Uh, let's see what else. Um, priests should anoint the heads of the newly baptized with chrism. Right? Now you see the priests do that. It was St. Sylvester who said this, this needs to be done. He also said bishops alone have the right of consecrating the holy chrism. And we see that every, every year during Holy Week leading up to Easter, we go to the chrism mass, the bishop blesses all the oils, all the way back to Pope St. Sylvester. He said only the bishop can do that. And um, let's see. Oh, uh, when we do the consecration at mass, Pope St. Sylvester said, you have to have a linen corporal uh, over the area where that consecration is taking place. You cannot, you cannot do it without that linen. Number one, it catches any particles. Number two, it represents the burial cloth around our Lord, just like the, um, the linens on the altar. Uh, so, um, so all these things, and oh, he, he um, uh, very importantly, presided over the Council of Nicaea. He's the one who approved that council, and especially the Nicaean Creed under Pope St. Sylvester, where this, this occurred. So all kinds of, uh, of important historical information there uh, uh, from St. Sylvester. And again, he died in the year uh, 335. Um, in many countries in Europe, uh, St. Sylvester's Day, uh, it was, it was, this was the day, it was in the 1500s, I, th I think. And in Germany, they, they don't see New Year's Eve, they say Sylvester. Like, what are you doing for Sylvester? That's, that's the term they use for it. I, I, um, so it's very interesting. I don't know if, if any other countries do that. But that is, again, the remnant that the, you, you didn't uh, calculate time according to calendar days. It was, it was feasts. Uh, uh, you know, it was the Annunciation, the Assumption, uh, the, you know, this day, that St. Crispin's Day, right? Uh, all these kinds of things. That's how people calculated time uh, was by the church. And, and, and now, really, you know, so we get into the end of the year. And, um, you know, people are like, oh, let's take stock. Let's think about the year that's already passed. And what have we done? And what are we going to do better for the future? And all those kind of things. And what are your New Year's resolutions? Uh, we've already been through this. At least we should have been right? At the 24th and last Sunday after Pentecost, when we, when we read about the second coming of Christ. And we are all to ask ourselves, how have I been this past year? What has my conduct been? How have been my daily prayers? What am I doing uh, you know, with my life? And am I living properly? And am I, am I prepared for the second coming of Christ? Am I prepared for when I'm standing face to face with Christ at, at, on Judgment Day? Am I ready for that? Do I need to change anything for this next upcoming liturgical year? It's so fitting that, 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 that we, the Catholic Church, uh, celebrate or, or rather call to mind to the faithful our final end. Uh, not at the same time, right? Like this, this end of the, the temporal year, uh, January 31st or de December 31st, you know, it's not this life that's important. It's not this world that matters. Like the past, this year, this temporal year has come and gone. That really is unimportant, uh, only insofar as like, what have I done spiritually? Right, so let's, let's, that, that, that our new year is at the beginning of Advent. It's a preparation for Christ. It, it's recalling before that happens, you know, Christ will come again. 
We should fear the dread second coming of Christ. Uh, that's what we should feel first, right? Fear the Lord's the beginning of wisdom. But after feeling that fear, the church transitions us into Advent when we become thinking, don't worry about it. Don't be afraid of the second coming of Christ because remember the first coming of Christ. Right? Remember when he came as a little child and he wants to bring you love and repentance. So there is hope. Right? That's, that's the, the new year that the church brings to us to mind. It's, it's already happened and that's what's more important than this, uh, like again, this temporal passing year. You know, There's going to be wars, rumors of wars, famines, plagues, right? all these kinds of things that we're seeing, living through right now. Don't worry about it. Right? It's been prophesied, it's been foretold. Uh, what matters is our soul. Right? What's the state of my soul? Am I, am I poor or, or, or rich in the spirit? Right? Am I an orphan spiritually? Do I not know who my father and mother are? You know, God the Father, Holy Mother Church. Uh, and, and there are. There are many poor orphans out there. doesn't matter how rich they are in this world. Um, do they know the truth? Uh, so that should be our resolution for this new year is to bring as many people as we can into the faith, into the true church. How? Uh, you know, by our example, by our prayers, by our sacrifices, by our humility, by our love of the truth, that's going to attract, you know, that's what attracts people. Uh, so let's make that resolution uh, for this year and ask for the intercessions of, of the saints, uh, St. Sylvester and, and all holy saints that we may start the new year uh, properly and well, uh, bringing people into the faith. God bless you all in the name of the Father, Son, and the Holy Ghost. Amen.